Hello. Today we'll be talking about ionic compounds and the naming of ionic compounds. Ionic compounds are made of elements that are metal plus a non-metal. Today we'll look at metals that have a predictable value. Okay. That means that I have a predictable valence electron or a predictable charge. Let's see how that works. Elements in group one, elements in group one, most times create an ion of charge of one. That is, they have one valence electron and they get rid of that electron forming a positive ion. Elements in group two, they form a two positive ion or charge, sorry. Because when they get rid of their two valence electrons, they lose two negatives, therefore keeping their positives. Let's do an example. If I have beryllium with nucleus and I have two electrons on the first and I have for two electrons on the last energy level. These last two electrons will be lost so that beryllium could have or achieve an octet rule or a stable condition. These electrons will be lost. They will go and meet or mix, sorry, with a non-metal. Therefore, if you have four positive, which are the protons, and now you have only two electrons, which are negatives, the charge would be positive two. Therefore, all of the elements in group two will have a charge of positive two when they react. In the same way, all of the elements in group one will have a charge of positive one when they react because they lose one electron. Let's move on. Group three elements, most of them, or at least some of them, would have a charge of three positive. That's 3A or group 13. So we have 1, 2, and charge of 3. Now we go from the right to the left. Elements in group 17 or group 7A will have a charge of negative 1 because they gain one electron when they react. Elements in group 16 or 6A will have a charge of, create a charge of negative 2. These are the gases I'm talking about and negative three on group 15. The non-metals, okay, here on group 14, will be sort of neutral. And there are elements that have more than one charge and we'll deal with those later on. But as of now, let's deal with the elements that have predictable values. Let's name them, let's combine them. Okay. Let's say that I'm going to combine sodium with oxygen. Sodium has, will be predicted to have a charge of positive one. Oxygen will be predicted to have a charge of negative two. That will be the predicted value of oxygen. When they combine, they create NaO which is sodium oxide. The first element name is the metal, in this case, the sodium. The second name is always the non-metal, in this case, the oxygen. And the ending changes its name to ide. In this case, it's sodium oxide. This is what happens. The charge of one of sodium goes to oxygen and the charge of two, negative two in this case, of oxygen goes to nitrogen. Therefore, the proper writing of sodium oxide is Na2, 1 in oxygen, and the one is not written, it is just understood. So the proper writing of sodium combining with oxygen would be Na2, or sodium oxide. Okay, 
let's do another example. Let's combine. Let's combine in this case. Beryllium with, and let's work with phosphorus. Okay, so the first thing you do, you know that the name will be beryllium phosphide. At this point, you don't know how many atoms of each you have until you work it out. So write down their element symbols, and they have be E, it would create charge of two, and they have phosphorus, it would create a charge of three. Well, these numbers on top, they will be crisscrossed to each other. So the two goes to phosphorus and the three goes to beryllium. Therefore, I create Be3, P2, or beryllium phosphide. Okay, moving on. What if the elements have the same charge? Well, they will be canceled. Let's do an example. Let's assume that I have beryllium still and I'm working with sulfur. So right now, write down their symbols and they have beryllium sulfide, beryllium, the charge of two positive and sulfur charge of two negative when when it combines or mixes and it would be that I would get Be2 S2 because the powers or the oxidation number go to the opposite element and in this case I end up with two and two but in ionic combinations I want to have or write the lowest ratio in this case it's a ratio of two to two the same thing as a ratio of two to one therefore i have bes because those two cancel out beryllium sulfide would be the name of this compound ionic naming ionic compounds a metal plus a non-metal gives you ionic combinations what you do, you take, again, you take their powers or their oxidation number and you crisscross them. And you write down the symbols and the new numbers obtained and they're written at the bottom. Let's do one more. Let's combine sodium with bromine. The symbol of sodium is Na, charge of one, positive. The symbol for bromine is Br, charge of one, negative, when they combine, they create an A1, the one is not written, and Br1. So this is sodium bromide, and the ones are not written, they are understood. This is part one of ionic bonding or ionic naming. I hope this helps you out.